everybody. It's me, Mitch, old guy in a drone. How y'all doing? Good to see you. Uh, following up Mel's show. And uh, I see some of you who were there came over here. Glad to see you. Uh, Pre-shows are always interesting. People come and they go and they come and they go. Anyway, welcome. Welcome to the FPV workshop. And uh, tonight we're going to do, uh, do a little bit of work <laughs> in the workshop, I hope. <laughs> and to help me along tonight, uh, I'll bring him in. Uh, he's already got the, the pose going in, in, in the green room. So uh, that's my cue. Here he comes. We know who that is, Mr. Art Carlson. Yeah. The world's newest chip chipmunk. How you doing, Art? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> oh man, I knew you and Lloyd were gonna get into that today. Uh, he's got sound effects and everything. Oh god, I'm in trouble. All right. <laughs> what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Oh man, I'm up. I'm up real high in the picture tonight for some reason. Yeah, me too. Uh, you know, I need to. Let's see. I think I have an adjustment for that somewhere, but uh, without actually having to turn the camera, let me see if that works. Oh well. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. You, All right. Now. I'm, are you in one of those barber chairs where you pull? It down? No, no, it's actually just a program for uh, for the Logitech camera that uh, oh. has up and down. You can position the picture on the screen up and down. And, uh, oh, did yeah, not know that. that. Yeah, oh. amazing. Cool. Amazing. Cool. So anyway, let me say hi to everybody here tonight. And Art, you follow along in the chat. Jody. Yeah, course, there's was Bill. Here. Go ahead. You want to do it? Yeah, Bill, Metro Drones, Ludsat, one, time with Drew, Rick Albert. Bob Casey, Jody Drone Shots, and AZ Drone Dude, and who else? Oh, and that's. Did you get Bob Casey? You got Bob Casey? Bob you Casey. Got, uh, okay. okay. All right. Well, We've got a good group here. Yeah, I, uh, I'd like to have, uh, you know, Mel crowd kind of crowds. I don't know. I don't, uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, He's up to, he gets 30, 35 people now. Yeah, that's pretty yeah. good. I wish I could get get that high. I'm working on it. Yeah, you're doing good. Well, man, the two of you guys get Ken Hearn to come to your show and everything. Yeah. So uh, mm -hmm. I guess uh, maybe one day I'll actually work my way into the big time here. <laughs> <laughs> ah, well, we, it is what it is. We we, uh, mm -hmm. we do we do what we do. So well, uh, a, a beanie with a propeller on it. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, it was nice he came to your show the other day. Yeah, yeah. that was. You know, I, I just, on a lark, I thought, oh, I'll send him a link. You, you never know, maybe he'll show up. And that was cool. And he was there for uh, my birthday, the birthday of Artco, the second second year of Artco. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bill... I'm I'm getting all kinds of notices on my phone here. I got uh, uh, Bill uh, from uh, Metro Drones said he's sitting here getting ready for my live stream. There he is. Hey, Bill, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thought you might want to check out a near miss by me downtown on a shoot mm -hmm. Mavic 2. Yeah, sure, Bill. Love to uh, just uh, stick a. Stick a link to that uh, in the uh, in the chat. Love to see that if you want to if you want us to play it, that'd be great. And then of course, cool. all these everybody else on the planet is going live at the same time. I am. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, all these people that uh, are stuck at home, the yeah. big the big drone channels like Stu UAV Futures over in Australia. You know, all those guys can't get out and uh, uh, do their do their thing now. So they uh, they just doing live streams like every day. So it's getting cool. it's getting very very uh, very busy, very busy. Anyway, we do what we do, and people watch what they what they want to watch. I suppose. Can you hear me? Is my mom, is my volume okay? I'm on a, a yeah, little lab, wireless yeah. lav mic tonight. Sound good? Okay, yep. good. In case, in right case after I feel my show this afternoon, Lloyd and I finally. Got all the bugs figured out on the 
using this mitzvah on V-Mitz. Well, that's cool. That's yeah. Good. Glad to, glad to see that. Mm -hmm. uh, did you get his figure figured out too? He was having problems I, with his. Yeah, he was having problems with the, the buttons on mine. I could get mine working, but he couldn't get his working. His is a little different than mine. His has two inputs when mine only has one. Yeah, but it should still work. Yeah, it I mean, should yeah, still work. I would, think, I, would I, I would think I would think that it would still work. I think we sorta of got him pointed in the right direction to where that'll work. So yeah. All right. Cool. Well Bill has sent me a link. Let's see what happens when I click yeah, on it. That'd be cool. Okay, downtown Detroit. Now, Bill, does this uh does this have any any sound in it that I might get a copyright uh, strike with? Or yeah, you might have to worry about music. If there's any music on there, you might want to mute that. Well, let's uh, let's go over here to it and uh, and see. Ooh, cool! What it looks like here. Yeah, the baseball stadium. Yeah, so it's America YouTube. Park. Okay, downtown Detroit. Yep. And to uh -oh, the man. left is Ford's Field, where the Lions play. That, that's where the, I believe that's where the Tiger Stadium used to be. Yeah, but I'm not yeah. getting. Hold on a second, Art. This is. Uh, I'm not getting. Uh, I'm getting a. Uh, a terrible. Um, no, that, for man. some reason. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I don't know why it. It's doing that. My internet connection is better than that. Yeah. Terrible. It's just terrible. It is terrible. It's just terrible. And is it is it a is is it a is it a YouTube video or is it just trying to? I don't know. I don't. I don't know why it's doing that. Let's let it play. It's it's. Oh, that looks like the the old headquarters to either GM or Ford over that building to the left. Yeah, but I don't know why it's uh, it's doing this. That's terrible. Uh-oh. Oh, well, Luke Sat says uh, everyone on the on the planet is online. <laughs> I don't know. That's that's really weird because uh, let me try just for grins. Let me go to my YouTube channel. And uh, and see if I uh, if I just play back uh, a video of mine here. Oh, this is the one. I think this is the one that was that was. Uh, no, yeah, it's, it's, it, it, it's still jumping. It's still. Uh, no, it's not good. Not good. Well, we gave it a try. Yeah, there you go. We gave it a try. We'll try it again no. later. But I'm I'm I surprised because boo, boo. you know what? I'm getting I'm getting that same kind of uh, same kind of stuff in my own stream. Is everybody seeing the stream okay? Or are we getting a lot? Of, are we getting a lot of buffering? And Metro Drone says no sound. Yeah, I don't think it was supposed to be any sound on that, but. Uh, How's my stream coming across now? Okay, look like I. Oh, let me uh, refresh it. Mm. Yeah, stream is okay. Bill says I don't know. Bill, sorry about that. Um, it's hard to say. I'm afraid to do anything after what happened to me last weekend. Yeah. You know, when 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 we we actually broke the whole internet and caused yep. worldwide problems. I don't want to do that again. It, you know, it's bad enough they're all blaming us for for what mm. happened last week, Art. Uh, Peter Carroll is there. Welcome, Peter. Hey, Peter, how you doing? Night train, Mike. Good to see you. Uh, Mike, good to see start, you. People are starting to come in. Good. Yeah. Good to see you. Well, let me tell you. Oh, and here comes uh, the third stooge of the three stooges. Um, oh, the, the, I'm a little. little dark. Dark, I get a light in the middle. On, I'm sorry. A little on the dark side there. Like, yeah, with that the sun is elevated. <laughs> <laughs> it's the dark and mysterious. I'll get a light in a minute, Carlos. Uh, <laughs> Ed just did a live fly, 
So we did that for a few minutes, and we encouraged everybody that was there to come here. Uh, oh, great. That's super, super. So uh, drone yes. Days, how are you doing? Good to see you. Good to see you, Drone Days. Drone um, Days, yeah. Well, drone shots. All right, let me see if I can get a little light okay. so I can really look ugly. Michigan uh, Adventures, welcome to the show. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, we're starting to get a little bit of a crowd in here. Michigan Adventures, how you doing, my friend? Well, let me show you what we're uh, what we're going to be uh, fooling with here the first part of this evening. We're going to be going into uh, playing with this. Uh, there. Ah, the so, ice race. Oh, the yeah, tiny this hawk. is the uh, Tiny Hawk 2 race ah. edition. Compliments of my good friend, uh, Rick Halber. Thank you again, Rick, for that. And what we're going to do, I haven't, I haven't done anything to it except screwed the props on because I thought that might not be the most exciting thing to watch uh, <laughs> on, on a live stream. But what I want to do tonight is I want to actually get it, get it ready to fly. So uh, when we get done all the housekeeping stuff here in a minute or two, we'll, we'll get into that and get into beta flight and the radio and and get it uh, and get it ready to fly and i want you to uh, remind me guys that um i want to talk about these new radios that are coming out uh the um there's two different lines of radios coming out that uh, are are uh get the all shots. season what all season radios i i don't get that is that a joke? Yeah, through your tires. You said all season. Oh, radials. No, radio. 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 Oh, radio. Oh, okay. oh, 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 to quote a <laughs> crazy Australian. Okay. Um, Jumper came out with the T-16 <laughs> and kind of turned the whole FPV world on its head. And now they're coming out with a new one called the T-18. And there is some confusion about uh, the the three different versions of the jumper t18 that are coming out and what it'll mm -hmm. do and the difference between the four in one module and the five in one module so i want to talk about that and then radio master is coming out with its t16 which is identical to the jumper t16 except it's not so uh we'll talk about that a little bit mm -hmm. and uh I already have the Jumper T16, so I mm -hmm. don't see any reason to run out and buy one of these others. But when they finally come out, and neither of them are shipping yet, uh, except uh, to reviewers, um, and I, they don't, uh, they don't, uh, no matter how much I jump up and down and wave my arms, they don't see me over here, so they don't send me stuff. <laughs> Maybe well, when I get to like twenty thousand, yeah, when I get to twenty thousand subs, the, uh, maybe they'll they'll take notice. But uh, okay. uh, I don't expect. I don't honestly don't expect that. But that because then I would have to actually review it, you know, and that's a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're going to talk about those radios. I want to talk about those. So don't let me forget because I wanted to talk about them on my last show, and we we never we never got back to it. Uh, about the chat here, anything? I'm uh, taking notes. Everything on the chat is good, no questions. When okay. they do come up. Ed, I'll love my there. drones is here. Hey, Ed, how it's you doing? Here. And Bud's Coins and Variety. Bud's Coins said he'd be back and he's here. Good to see you. And Michael Sorry. McReynolds is here. Michael, how you doing, buddy? Yeah. Thanks for thanks for coming in. Uh, so I wanted to, to hook up this little thing and then uh, I wanted to share with you a neat little trick that I found uh, to help tame the throttle response on FPV quads, except, especially indoor ones. And any of you guys that have flown FPV indoor know that if your throttle's a little touchy, the thing is very hard to control the altitude, keep it from bouncing off the ceiling. And there's a, there's a very simple, it's not that simple, but it, it's not, ridiculously hard to do uh, a setting you can make in your radio that will allow you to adjust the throttle stick sensitivity mm -hmm. for any for any quad uh, that you want and 
adjust it so that the throttle is less sensitive and more sensitive. And you could do that with a knob on the radio without actually having to go in and change programming every time. Oh. And and, and I tried it today and it worked and it worked pretty neat. So I want to show you guys that tonight too. Yeah, cool. So if yeah. we get past that stuff, then we'll decide what else what else to do next. And I hope okay. that uh, some of that might interest might interest the people here. I I, mm -hmm. I know we have a lot of guys here that are probably more advanced than me, but uh, we're gonna do it anyway. All right. So uh, with that, I do that cut the top end drone days. Yeah, this this cuts the top end, but the easy. But it also it, 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 it makes the stick gives you higher resolution on the stick and, and it does it uh, oops. <laughs> it does it with uh, I use this this knob right here. Uh. So when the knob is turned all the way up, the throttle sensitivity is a hundred percent. When the throt when the knob is turned halfway it's 75% full stick, and when the knob is turned all the way down, it's only 50% full stick. Oh, and you attach that, that to like a super rate or something? No, it, it, it's, it, it adjusts the rate, the weight of the throttle. I'll no, show I know. You. I'll show you. you do that in beta flight somehow. Right? Yeah, but this has nothing to do with beta flight. You don't have to oh, make really? any changes to beta flight. And you can do it while you're right in the middle of a flight. If you say, wow, that throttle's awful touchy, you can turn turn it down a little bit if you want. Mm, okay. While you're flying. This it's is the on, handy. on a Tyrannus? Or on a Tyrannus, on a, any open TX radio. All right, cool. Mm -hmm. right, so open TX looking radio. forward to learning. I'm going to yeah, be quiet. So I, I, will, I will show you guys that, and it is absolutely the coolest thing. And what I did was really cool today is I took my little, uh, my little tiny hawk here, this one. Focus. 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 Reach out there. Grab it. There Grab you. the focus. This little tiny hawk. And mm. I said, well... I want it to hover at exactly half throttle. So I, I got it flying and it was climbing. And as it was flying, I actually turned the knob until it hovered. I, I was able to tune that in flight. Right. So that half throttle was hover. And it made it much less sensitive on the altitude control, mm -hmm. which is a pretty cool, pretty cool thing. And then... I also set up some uh, a, a voice alerts that would let you know if it wasn't set to 100%. So if you go out to the field to fly, for example, you want to know if you've got the thing turned down. And this, whenever you arm the quad, it'll actually tell you. It'll speak out and tell you the uh, setting of that uh, of that knob uh, if it's lower than 100%. So I'll show you how to set that up. It's pretty. Uh, Mitch, will it give you a percentage when it gives you that that warning? Yeah, like, it tells you percentage. It okay. tells you plus minus one hundred to plus one hundred. So if the if the right. knob is in the center, it'll say zero percent. If it's fully up, oh, it'll okay. say plus one hundred. If it's fully mm -hmm. down, it'll say minus. It just tells you the position of the knob. Yeah, yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. Okay. So with that being said, and that'll also work. I, I only set it up in my uh, radio uh, model settings for the D8 receiver. Now I can do it to all the other drones, but the only ones that I really am interested right. or really interested in having that kind of control over are the ones I fly indoors, the little whoops and things. And they have the D8 receivers and, and that's the one I set it up. So when I bind my uh, jumper to this uh, new little quad, that those settings will already be in the radio for any model that's uh, bound to the to the d8s so what we're going to do here is i'm going to take the the tiny little quad and since you know it's got this uh here let me come over here to the uh to to your bench to, this, to the bench and you know it's got the little uh the little uh, usb port back here and in order to get the wire yeah. in you have to tilt the camera forward and i don't like doing that but I happen to have this little uh, 90 degree USB oh, cool. uh, adapter well, that, nice. that, that came with my Tyro 89. And uh, I'm gonna use that. So basically I just have to plug that in here. Mm -hmm. And now I'm gonna take it over to the computer and plug it in. 
And what blue? Blue and screen. Blue. And now I'm going to go over to beta flight over here on this monitor. The thing is really fast, Lutzat. You'd be surprised. I, I, I'm, fast. Sure, I'm sure it is ridiculously fast. Okay. And we're going to connect going to connect the beta flight here and rock the little quad around and make sure everything is up. That's up and that's down. Yaw left, yaw right, bank, bank. Okay, so that means it should be all set up right. It's it's pretty cool. And now I want to turn my, uh, uh, my jumper radio on. And uh, the first thing I want to do is... Um, Bind the receiver. So let's uh, let's go to the receiver tab. And of course, nothing's happening. Now, I I think this is an SPI receiver. Let's take a look at the configuration and see what, what it says for that. receiver. It says SPI RX support, free sky D. Okay, so it's so I should be able to go into the CLI, and the command is uh, bind RX. No underscore SPI. I did bind underscore RX, and, and now it's it, and now it says it says binding. Oh, cool. So now I go to the radio over here. Hang on, let me get back to that. I go to the radio. Okay, and I, I hit. I go to the to the area where it sets up the receiver, and since it's already set for the. Free Sky D8, I'll go here to bind. It says binding and it'll chirp. And that should be bound right now. So let's uh, go back to receiver, the receiver tab. And the quad will reboot itself and go back in, go to receiver. And take a look and see if I got stuff. And I got stuff. So let's take a look at that and go back over yeah. here. And now all this stuff moves. Okay. And that's roll, pitch, yaw, and throttle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Very good. And now um, I want to go into my modes tabs and see what they have set up. Well, they got the arm set up on aux one. That looks right. So you see what I'm doing yeah. here? That's yeah. on aux yeah. one. And that's the way I have my radio set up because I try to do things in a pretty standard way. Uh, angle mode is the mode switch, which is aux two. And if you see that little blip that moves down there. So I want angle mode here. I want horizon mode in the center. Now, these these things can be anywhere. As long as that little thing is somewhere contained in this yellow bar, it'll work. But I like to narrow them down uh, mm -hmm. to make sure that it's inside that. So it's inside the uh, it's inside of this one, which makes the angle mode light up. When I click the switch into aux two into the center position. It moves to the bar on horizon mode. And then when I move F2 to the final bottom mode, it's not in anywhere. And that automatically puts it in acro mode. Uh, aux 3 is set to make it beep. So that's a momentary switch. And that, although I don't hear any beeping, it's working. And flip over after crash is aux 4. And that's this one. And I like to have that all the way down. So that's all set up pretty good. Make sure to save it. And mm -hmm. let's take a look at the configuration tab here and see what we got. We got DSHOT 600. Uh, I'm not using uh, all the board alignment should be good. Arming, I'm going to change that to 180 degrees. That's the small angle. <laughs> you, know, you know all about that, Carlos, right? I just used it two days ago. Thank God. Oh. I was in a tree like 30 so much. Oh, okay. Know? So it worked when we set it with the small angle setting oh, in not the that, CLI. No, not that particular quad, but yeah. Uh, just that 180 degrees is a beautiful thing. 
Okay, and this says Tiny Hawk 2 Race as the craft name. And uh, there's the radio. And these are all, uh, we want air mode on. Do you have yours enabled all the time or just in Acro, Carlos? It's on all the time. You like it on all the time, okay. I mean, uh, we want OSD, anti gravity, and dynamic filter. We have no GPS, uh, so everything is uh, everything is. Uh, Did you do the RX loss thing? The I no, I need to I need to set that up. Yeah, it's, it it says RX set, so it should beep. But oh, I don't ha I don't have the battery plugged in, so the ESC is not going to beep. I just have the uh, USB plugged in. So we will save those settings and reboot. Telemetry lost. Telemetry so what I've got now, basically, is that that's if I look at the ports, those are already set up, and there's there's uh, smart audio, <clears throat> which is nice. That's set up. Uh, the uh, I'm gonna open this up here, and I'm gonna go to the video transmitter tab, mm -hmm. and the VTX table's already loaded. My standard channel for uh, flying everything is Fat Shark Channel 3. And the power I'm going to set to 200 milliwatts. And I'm going to say uh, low power disarm is on. What page is that, Mitch? Under what? Tab. If you have, if you have, uh, beta flight four point one or above. I believe I have them. These are VT. It's under video transmitter. The VTX tables, and uh, you can do. You can also set these commands in the CLI as well. But here they give you a graphical interface to set the channel. And the power and what this low power disarm means oh, so you can is do it that all, though, right? what's that you can do it here because you've done this on the cli you can do the right. low power disarm here also right this is this gives you a graphical interface it does effectively right. the same thing and changes it so That's if cool. i save if i save all of these things for example I, and then i go into the recovered. and then i go into the cli and I type get VTX and say enter, you'll see that it set my band to four, my VTX channel to three, my VTX power to three, which is 200. VTX low power disarm is set to on. Frequency is 5780. So, so it, it, it made all those changes, you see? So, that, so that'll work okay. So now uh, it is it is all Telemetry set up. Lost. Every time it reboots, it turns the receiver off, so the transmitter tells me it lost telemetry. Uh huh. All right. So we did the setup. Uh, I I could calibrate the accelerometer. Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to see if it looks like it's pretty well calibrated now. It does. So I'm not going to fool with it. It's probably pretty close. Uh, ports, right. we did configuration. Fail safe, we just want it to drop. There mm -hmm. it is, that's good. Yes, Power yes. and battery, that's don't have to fool, pretty much fool with that. That's pretty standard stuff. PID tuning, let's just, for example, see what the rates are. 667 degrees a second, that's, that's not bad. That's fine. Uh, I'm not going to fool with any of the tuning on this. They say it, 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 it's tuned right when it comes. Uh, motors, not going to worry about the motors. OSD, okay, let's see what we have in the OSD here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually turn on my, uh, got my little, trans, my little transmitter here. Well, Mr. Rick, how about finally doing this? Well, Rick's been here. Oh, he was. I didn't see him. All yeah, over. he was here early. I was. I'm hope so because this is, this That's is the quad. This is this is the quad that he gave me. I wanted him to. Uh, yeah, yeah. I wanted him to see this. Okay, so let's. Uh, 
let me put the let me plug the battery into this thing and and see if I get something on my on my VTX. I should get a display, and I do, I do, and I'm gonna go in here to my uh, to my little. You give me a second to get my my IV cam up. I will launch IV cam and go into uh, launch it on here. There it is. Oh, cool. Cool. Okay. Cool, cool. So there is the uh, there's the on screen display, and uh, it's kind of hard to see with. Um, let, me, let me point this camera at something a little darker. Right, right, right. So it says F, look down at the lower left, it says F3. Now let me bring Betaflight back up here. And uh, so that's down here. So I'm going to move that up just one, one notch there. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to move this up one. Ah, okay. And I'm going to move this up one. Mm -hmm. And that uh, got him up a little higher there. And let's see what else we got on here. We got uh, the Tiny Hawk 2 race. The, the, the uh, warnings I like to put in the center. The, uh, the name of the quad I'll stick down here. I want to I want to get RSSI in there, so I need to find RSSI value and put that here, uh, and that'll be over here. Mitch, yeah, that that camera doesn't have a lens cap, right? No, didn't yeah, come didn't. with one. No, because it sits back inside that little white right. frame. Yeah, uh, okay, so I got RSSI. And now I want to get, uh, what else do I need? I have, I want my mode to show what mode I'm in. So we want flight mode. And put that over here. It's stabilized. And this is the battery voltage, but I like to have, uh, <coughs> battery cell voltage instead of uh, total voltage because that lets me know. So I want average battery voltage, battery average, average cell voltage. That just popped up right over here. Let's get that out of the way for a second. And I want to get rid of cell voltage, battery voltage and put the average cell voltage down here in the bottom. All right, so that gives me a... Uh, and another thing I want to do is I want to go to my font manager down here at the bottom. It's actually behind me. And I want to pick the... Uh, I like this uh, one that says clarity. And I'm going to upload the font. Telemetry lost. Telemetry recovered. Telemetry lost. Telemetry recovered. Telemetry okay, lost. that worked. Telemetry recovered. All right, so now let me show you what I got on my uh, on my on-screen display. See that? See how much bigger and heavier the. Aye, yeah. But mm -hmm. I'm missing a whole line of them here. So let's go back to this mm -hmm. and go back to on-screen display. Oh, I forgot. I did all that and I didn't save it. That's the, no, no, that's no. where you have to you have to hit the save yeah. thing, guys. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, let's let's go ahead and fix all this again. That, oh. uh, let's get rid of the battery voltage and get the uh, uh, average cell voltage in here. Mitch. Yeah. Uh, that font that font uh, tab that you that you went on it's behind you in that corner. It's way down in the lower lower right hand okay. corner. Yeah, it says font manager right next right next to the save command. Good to know. Okay, mm -hmm. so we got the name. I wanted to I wanted to, I wanted to put the name uh, 
right here in the middle. Mm -hmm. Put that there, put my average cell voltage here, put my timer up here in this corner, put my uh, um, RSSI up there so I can see my, my RSSI value right here and my flying mode, fly mode, fly mode right there. And I want to put that, whoops, I want to put my fly mode right over here. Are you watching the chat on me, for me, guys? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anybody asking me any questions or anything or making mm -hmm. fun of me? And I'm going to save that now. There you go. Okay. So now let's take a look at what we got here. So there's... There's the uh, on-screen display. Here's your host holding the camera in front of the <laughs> in front of the. There it is. Cool. Okay. So uh, so that's that. So it, it should be ready to fly. Mm -hmm. So let's oh, yeah, let's let's, let's close close this out and uh, open up the window. Let hold it on a second. Hold on. Let me, clo <laughs> let me close out my camera. Uh -huh. And uh, what we're gonna well, what I'm gonna try to do is is I'm gonna try to see if I can't uh, if I can't just set this here and maybe you guys will get and give you guys a little. Don't tell me you're going to hover me, it. Right of me trying to hover it on this table here. There we go. Can I make a suggestion? What? After praying, use the one, <laughs> use that little, uh, what do they call that thing? The jumper and do it 1S. I'm telling you, that thing's going to take off. Really? Uh, yes. <laughs> well, I mean, you can try and stable, go for it, but. Uh, I can, I can try hold it. Can you, whoa, I, 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 I'll tell you what I need, what I need to, I'll tell you what I need to do, guys. I need to go mobile here. So I got the wireless mic. So give me a second that I will, I will get my wireless headphone thing going here. And, uh, you want to see it fly? <laughs> I'll take it in the other room with the camera and everything. So we'll see if we can make it fly. Good luck, right. sir. All right. I'm going to, uh, I'll tell you when I'm ready to go again. All right. Lower the camera in Okay, say something. Something. Hello. That's I, I, one. I don't hear, oh, the plug came out. Hang on, hang on. I, all right. Oh, all right. the ring. All right. All right, now I got you. Test one, two. Okay, test. good. Got you. So I am, I am really mobile now. I mean, uh, yeah, you're, are you here? Let me, let me get you so you're looking at, uh, so you're looking at this camera there. There we there go. go. Okay. That's so, uh, yeah, I got this and I just got to clip this on my, on the you other side of me. Smaller and you bigger, Mitch. I got crap all over me here, man. I got wires and transmitters. And... Okay, so we'll take this little quad here and we'll take Good the work. camera. Okay, here we go. We're going for a walk, guys. How's this look? Can you see? All good so far. Can yeah. you see? A little okay. dark. Uh, well, uh, hold on a second. Alexa, inside lights to 100%. I'm on vacation. Oh, there she is. <laughs> no, she do it. Alexa, tell okay. us a joke. She can't hear you. <laughs> uh -oh. <laughs> okay, so right. let's uh, My let's let's do this. Let's uh, can uh, now I can't uh, <laughs> I I can't see the screen on the computer from here. But can you guys see the see the quad? No, it's dark in there, buddy. It's dark. Okay. Yes, well, hang hang on a second here. Uh, I mean, I'm going to turn that. I'm going to turn that throttle thing down to like 50 percent. How's that sound? I think that's a good idea. Okay, and uh, I need to go somewhere where I need to get some more light in here. Hold on. There we go. Okay. That's, how about that's now? Better. Much better. All right. Now, Mitch, how much? How much of the quad right can you see? A little higher with the camera. We could see the whole quad, but you're going to take off, so you might want to go up a little bit. Up a little. Should I move the camera back a right. little right. further? How's that? Let's, let's see what happens with your first takeoff if you don't take off some of your ceiling. Minus 100. <laughs> Good luck. Okay, the, mo the, motors, the motors aren't running. 
for some reason. So yeah. that's a bad sign. I may have to yeah, reboot it. Oh, it well, no, it's it, well, it's plugged in, but I may have to. And your switch warnings and everything's. Yeah. But let me, uh, oh, it's tight little plugs, aren't they? Oh, it's pin. Okay, so it's plugged in. And throttle all the way in, down. It's in angle mode, throttles all the way down. Minus there it goes. 100. Okay, did you hear it say minus 100? Yep. Yep. Oh, nice. Nice and quiet, right? Yeah. The good thing you lower the throttle. Oh, I'm I'm about half throttle now, so it's perfect with that throttle thing. Right. Cool. Nice. Very nice. All right, power loop. <laughs> <laughs> but whatever it's worth, you're out of camera. If you fly in front of your TV, I'm trying. Hold on a second. I'm trying uh -huh. to keep it in the camera. <laughs> right in that area is good. Remember, I'm flying this line of sight now. No goggles. <laughs> and, the f and the ceiling fan's on, too. A little lower. There we go. He's back. You better watch your knees. Those clouds. <laughs> cool. Hey. How about that, guys? Work so nice. we got it set up. My little throttle mod works great, man, to be able to tune this thing down so it... it the maximum I could have given it at that point with, with that <coughs> setting Excuse was uh, only half throttle. So in other words, when I moved my throttle up full, it was only giving half throttle because I had it turned all the way down. And that, I got to tell you, that is one handy setting to have for flying inside. Cool. All right. Now, now you can, guys can go for a walk with me. Back all into, righty, nice. Back into the to the madness that is Mitch's world my studio and workshop combination here okay hey so the ip cam thing it's working pretty good today it's done good. yeah wow okay guys there we go let me shut this yeah, off definitely no risky moves and uh that's that's not as as terrible as i thought it would be as far as being wild and uncontrollable Oh, you had it unstable and you back down on the throttle. Wait till you oh, take yeah. that out for real. Yeah, yeah, of <laughs> course. But uh, it, it is quiet. It is quiet. It's it's a cute little bugger. So anyway, what I just did there, guys, was um, really all it takes uh, to set up uh, to set up a uh, a little tiny hawk. Now I already had this, the radio set up, but the radio set up is pretty is pretty simple. One night I'll go over that. But I, what I wanted to do is I did want to go over with you the uh, uh, hang on a second here. Don't they suggest you try acro now? No, it, not in the house. No, <laughs> no. No, it's too, <laughs> not not with not with not without prop guards on that little thing. That's a little buzz saw. No, I don't just cut up everything. Do a number on my TV set. Okay, anyway, mate. What, yeah. Real yeah. quick, what you're about to do is you're gonna show us how you set that throttle thingy, right? Right. And here's and the, now, I can do this on on my X Light radio as well, so I can follow you, along. Do you have a knob on your X Light radio? Mm, the sliders don't count in the front, right? The uh, trim are those the trims? Like no, the, do, you uh, have, do you have a do you have a knob or do you have a, a, a slider switch on the side? I do have a slider. Okay, well, look, look, it, make sure that this me, is a slider. Check it show out. me, show me the yeah, radio. I, I have a knob just like that. On mine, these here they slide back and forth. Okay, yeah, that'll that'll work. You just have to make sure that you got it up at a hundred percent when you're you know most of the time unless you want to turn it down. Gotcha. All right. Well, I'll, I'll always, I can always replay. All right. Let me shut up and let you do your thing. I'm okay. Sorry. Anyway, so here's, here's what you do and I will, uh, get you back to this. All right. Uh, 
How we doing? Anybody still watching? Yeah, yeah. Let me take a second here, have a sip of water, because that was so ex that was exciting, man, to actually fly like that in the house. I can't wait to watch the replay and see how it looks. A glowing, a glowing light bouncing up and down. Look good. <laughs> this this weather we've we've had here is just so awful. It's just windy as hell lately with that. Well, we got that uh, tropical storm Arthur. Hey, off, off yeah, Art named after you. Uh, you know, yeah. they uh, they made the mistake one year in naming one after me. Yeah, y'all remember Hurricane Mitch? I don't. Uh, no. I forget what year it was in. It was um, quite a while ago, but Hurricane Mitch went across the Gulf of Mexico into Nicaragua and killed 5,000 people. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that's what they get for naming a hurricane after me. Mm -hmm. They should have known They should have known better. Yep. So. <laughs> All right. So here's what, here's what you do. And for those of you who know OpenTX and know how to set up a radio, uh, this, no, is, this, is what, this is what we're going to do. We're going to turn okay. it. Well, Art, this, this is going to be for you, too. Okay. So we're going to turn the radio on, and uh, I've already got this uh, already got this set up uh, for this model. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a model that I don't that I don't have it set up on. Um, or should I just show you this one? Now let me just show you this one. I'm getting you know. okay. To get to get into the settings, there's a button here that says model. You hold that down, and then there's a page button, and that takes you to all the different model setting pages. So let me let me zoom in so you can actually read what these things say. Can you see that? Can you read it? Uh, just go up, a, right there, perfect. perfect. Okay, are you? I'm seeing a little bit of like vignetting. Uh, Oh, that, yeah, no, it's okay. Not so bad? Okay. That's it, right there. All right. Go your left, just a bit, right right there. Perfect. All right, there it is. I see. Right. Okay, so what we have is a number of different pages. The first one says model setup, then you have flight modes, then you have inputs, then you have mixes, no. outputs, curves, global variables, logical switches, special functions, custom scripts, and telemetry, then you're back at model setup again. Mm. So you want to go into mixes, okay? And some people, you you know that <laughs> oh the chat, what? Oh my lamp fell. Oh okay. All right. Scared the big Thought maybe something. So you're in the mixer page. Okay, That's so you go into the mixer page. Right. And and your your throttle is either going to be channel one or channel three, depending on whether you have A E T R or T A E R as your channel order. Uh huh. So do you know which yours is? I have Car uh, is, Oh I do. Yeah, yeah. Throttle is Are you are you doing this as well, Art? Yes. I thought okay. Art was I thought you were asking Art. Yeah, my channel is one throttle. One just the way you're throttle, yeah. And yeah. uh Way you can tell is if you if you scroll this thing to to when you get to channel one it says a hundred percent up there see see where I'm over a hundred percent you do that by turning the wheel on the the scroll wheel on the on the right hand side but do when I have you go to go there you look down at the bottom and it says channel one and if you move your throttle stick you'll see that the uh, let me get something to point with here I got something here to point with. Right. You'll see that uh, down here, the, the the thing is moving. See, no. or over here, it's moving. Right. Can you yeah, see that? Here. Can you oh, point it down here? Uh, there it is. Um, I was too low. Down here, you'll see the the little scales. Oh moving. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. And that'll tell you if channel one is your throttle. It also on the right to the right of it, right here, should say throttle. Now, right. if you're if you're set up A E T R. That'll say aileron elevator and throttle will be on channel three. Which is yours, Art? Uh, well, let me show you where 
Where I am. Uh, oh, you got it. You got a QX7. Okay, I'm going to have to show you how to do this on a QX7 because the display is different. Oh, uh, okay. 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 So let me show Carlos how to do this right now. All right. So so what you're going to what you're going to do Carlos is you're going to uh let's go down here to a channel that I don't have. Let's assume I'm on channel 1 right here. Okay? Mm -hmm. And this is Uh, it's not set up yet. You need to press and hold down your control over the where it says 100%. And you'll get a sub menu that says edit, insert before, insert after, copy, move, yep, or delete. Yeah. You see that? Yes, sir. Okay. Click insert after. Ooh. Okay. And you'll get you'll get this screen right here. Okay? Yep. yep. Forget the mix name. Go mm -hmm. to the the screen that says source. And this is where you're gonna tell it what switch you're gonna use. Okay. Okay. So press it down until it's blinking and move the switch you want to use for this throttle adjustment. And it'll automatically pick up the name of the switch. What does yours say? It says inputs, but I'm, I'm, wait, you said switch or the- No, the, source. It says mix no, name. No, I know, but, right. But once you do the source, hold on, hold on. All right, so I, I click into source, hold it Make hard. Make it blink. Make it blink. It's blinking. It's blinking. Yeah. Then go ahead and just move this move this thing you want to switch, and it'll pick up the name of that switch in in the box, and then click it again to save it. Mm, it's not the same as yours. Source QX2. You said hold it. Now I see input sticks, pots, RX cyclic cyclic. Hold hold it up to the hold it up to the uh, screen. See if I can see it. Wait, hold on. It went off. Just yeah, there you go. Inputs, sticks, pots. I would select pots. Right. Okay. Which is the sliders, right? Yeah, I guess. We'll find and out. And then what choices do you have? It went back to source. Oh, I was supposed to hold it down on pots. See, here we go. I've never set up that radio, so I understand. Uh, Maybe we should wait for another. Time. I don't want to make you wait. Let's go. Hold on a second. Source. It says S one. Now, is is S one indeed? That's generally not a pot. That's usually your one of your switches. Well, then I'm not doing it right. I'm gonna go back. Hold on. That didn't change. Oh shit. Did that change stuff now? S1. I think that changed stuff. No. Hold on. <laughs> oh, this thing is so I'm, small and my eyes. I I'm going to have to me. learn. Don't tell me I'm going to have to learn how to program one of those x light radios that I don't have. Oh, it has both. It has throttle 100 S1. It has both. That's weird. So it says no. You're you're yeah, under one, throttle, uh, but and then you're under it says plus equal one hundred. That's one. Okay. All right. Here's what you want to. Here's what you want to have. You want to have it. The source should be whatever switch. You want you want to control it. Then there's is there something that says weight? No. Uh oh. Hold on. Uh, offset. You don't have anything that says weight or offset. No, but look, this is new now on my radio. Let me show you. Where are you? You see how it has the throttle and underneath it says plus equals? Okay, but you're back. You're back to the mixer page. Correct. You're not you okay. need to go into that one that you just put in underneath okay. throttle and edit it. All right, so you said edit? Edit. No, you said insert something. 
Uh, you did, but but what happened was you inserted it, but you backed out of it before you got uh, done okay, so configuring edit. it. Yeah. You know I mean? So now I had it. You said and now don't you work. And now you should see things that say weight Nick offset, Nick. multiplex, yeah. yes. all that stuff. Okay. So and the source, the source of this particular mix is going to be whatever knob or switch you want to select. But, you know, you know, I assumed you knew how to select in most of these radios. You just move it to that thing that says source. Right. Click it, it once. It should blink. Right. Don't hold it. Just click it. Yeah. And then it, when I click it, it goes to the inputs, sticks, pots, whatever. It shouldn't do that. It should just blink. It shouldn't go to that menu unless you held it down. If you just click it. No, it's quick. blinking now. It's blinking, yes. Now move the knob that you want to you wanna do it. Okay. I'm moving. And what did it say? E1, E2. What? Oh, no. S1. Is that move. slider? Is it still blinking? Yes. Move a different knob and see if it changes. I don't really have, I don't want to commit to a knob. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. You can always change these things. So okay. just move a different knob and see if it changes. It did. It changed to SA now, right? Okay. So go back to the first knob. Move it. That was the sliders. Okay. Whatever it, knob or whatever. S1, S2. That's straight. All right, hold on. You know what? S2. Okay, I'm going to make it S2. Okay. All right. Now, S2. after 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 it says the thing that you wanted to say, right? Click it. Just click it again. Okay. Stop. And and, and it'll make it stop blinking. Now, one of one of the things that you have to know when you're in these radios and editing, there's a difference in actions between just clicking it once or clicking it and holding it for half a second. Like a long time. When you click and when you do a long hold, that's when you get those context menus that gave you all that other stuff. Right. So just click it. Okay. So now underneath that, it should say uh, weight. Does it say right. weight? Yes, okay. sir. So highlight weight. 100. And, and highlight weight, dial that back to 25%. Do I have to click first to take click first till it's blinking yep dial okay. it back to 25 percent yep dial it back dial it back there Carlos. yeah and uh, there it is and then click okay. it again okay it's not doing it for me why wouldn't it do it do you have a dial on there i have that slider but it's not sliding what slider the thing in the this thing here, it's like a little trim switch. Maybe it just doesn't work because I don't have that button like you. you know, Carlos, Carlos, that's yeah. not what you, that's not what you use to change settings in your radio. You have a button and. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm saying, but, but once I'm into the weight and it's blinking at a hundred, you said click it till it's blinking and then move it down. Oh wait! No, I move your down. move your settings oh, your settings knob your no, your no. settings knob. No, don't touch. You don't need to touch that switch at all. Okay, now I see. Mm -hmm. see okay, down to twenty five. On, on my radio, I've got this thing over here. This yeah, wheel. No, no, no. I got you. Totally. You can turn the wheel and push the wheel. Okay, you may have a knob and a button. Yeah, I have a knob that I have to just hit. Yeah. All right, now it all makes sense. You know what I sure. did? I did like the equals like last week. <laughs> okay, I'm at twenty five. All right, now go down to the next one below it that says offset. I don't have to click this, 25? Yeah, click it after you're done. Okay. One click. All right, so, so right now you're learning basically how to change settings in some of these things. Mm -hmm. you, yeah, yeah. You, you, you scroll to the setting, click it till it blinks, scroll till you get the setting you want, click it, and that saves it, okay? Yep. So okay. then you scroll down again to the next one, which says offset. I'm there. So there's source, weight, and offset. Mm -hmm. Click it till it blinks. Scroll to get seventy-five percent. Okay. Seventy-five percent. Yes, sir, Alvin. You got it. Did and you get I, that? I'm getting there. It's just you know my eyes. I'm sorry. <laughs> get some glasses, man. I have them, but this. <laughs> 
Okay, 75. Blinking. Okay, Seven, now scroll five. now scroll all the way down to where it says multiplex. All right, multiplex. Add. Click it and scroll till you till it says multiply. Wait a minute. Multiply, Carlos. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. Multiply. And then save that. Okay. Okay. Now back out until you get back to this page again where you on it says mixes. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. You have a back button, don't you, somewhere? Yeah, but I went too far. All right, I'm in mixes. Okay. okay. Now highlight the mix you just you just did. Right under throttle, there should yeah. be a line. Yep. 100. Highlight that. Push and okay. hold your switch until okay. you get that. And say insert after again. Okay, click. Click. I'm you got click. that? Yeah. So now, so now you should be on this page right here. Which looks just like the page we just did. Yes, that's what I'm Okay, at. so go down to where it says sorts and do the same thing. Pick the same switch. Quick, just a quick. It's blinking. Same switch. Okay. All right. Go down to wait. Remember wait. Got it. It's says... twenty-five. Twenty-five percent. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Okay, I did that. I click. I save. Wait. Click. Down to twenty-five. Got it. You getting there, sir? All right. <laughs> All right. Twenty-five. Click. Right. Offset. Minus twenty-five. Offset. Yeah. Right down below weight, it says yeah, offset. Yeah. Minus twenty five percent. So I'm going down. Yeah, look at that. Okay. Then it, down where it says multiplex, it's it should say add, is that correct? Getting there. Yes. Okay. Back back out of that. Wait, wait, do I want to press uh, click on the ad? No, it, it's already says that. That's what it has to say. Okay, so All right, back so out. Now, so now what I want you to do is go back to the mixes page. I'm there. Highlight um, next to channel one where it says 100%. Next to... Mm -hmm. Wait, shit, what am I 100%? Okay. Okay. Put put your throttle in like in the center until the 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 scale down at the bottom shows like right in the middle. See. Mm -hmm. Now is your that switch that you just assigned to this whole thing? Is it all the way as high as it can go right now? Uh. Yeah. All right. Turn it up all the way. Move your throttle and make sure that those little bars at the bottom show that you're getting. Full minus to full positive on your throttle throw. Do I they? Don't, I don't see those bars. Like these. you don't have those bars, huh? No. Um, do you have uh, a monitor screen you can get to? You know how to monitor the uh, the outputs? No, no, on your radio, there's a monitor no. screen. I don't know how to get to the one on that one. Um, mm -hmm. But you can't you can't see what it won't show you what the output is, right? No. Uh, well, here's what here's what you need to do, Carlos. I'm listening. You need you need to find out on that radio how to display the monitors. Okay. Um, That's at the bottom of that particular radio on the page, right? Those sliders. Well, on this radio, since it's got such a big screen, 
You see, I have a page here that shows the motions. See how all the sticks are moving? Right, right. And that's very handy because that shows me, for example, right up here, uh, this one right up here is throttle. So I can see that it's going all the way from the bottom to all the way to the top. But if I turn my, my knob up top here that I just programmed down right. to, to the bottom, that shows me that the maximum throttle I can get is only halfway, 50% throttle, see? I see. And if I, put my, if, if I put my stick here and start turning my knob up, you see it starts to increase the throw. Right. It'll actually decrease the throw from 100% to zero. That means that if I'm up here, full full throttle stick is the whole normal works. But if I throw that knob the other way, my whole throttle throw only gives me 50% maximum, which means that in this area where it's hovering, I have a lot more resolution in the stick. See that? So that should, that should work for you right now. Uh, you can test it out or try to figure out how to get into the monitor screen on that radio, because all radios have them that allow you to monitor it. Um, the way that, that I get into the monitor screen on this one is I, I press, uh, press and hold model, press and hold model again. The page that you, that you the, 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 the button that you press to get into the setups, okay, in other words, if I have my blank, my regular screen, I press one button to get into the setups and then the page button to change pages. So what, what do you press to get into your setups? <clears throat> the main button, one main button here. All right, press that once, the main button. But in what screen? In the from, blank screen? From, from your blank you okay, know, okay. beginning press screen. Press it button. once and then press it again. No, that's not it. Okay. See, in this in this radio, I press the model once, press it again, and then I get the the uh, channels monitor. Then I can get all kinds of different different pages for the different channels. <clears throat> but uh, this could be it's older and you know, hold on. Set up timer. And... One day says it's on page one, but I don't think so. Yeah, if anybody, if anybody in the chat knows uh, knows how to uh, find the monitor page on that X Light radio, I'm sure Joshua Bardwell would know that. But yeah, that's that's why he gets the big bucks. And yeah, he had 750 viewers on his live stream this afternoon. <laughs> Wow. Unbelievable. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, but either way, I should be able to... So here's the deal. Here's the deal. And I'm going to show you what to do if you've screwed everything up and it won't work. Okay? <laughs> Renee? So the that... line, that line, you know how to get back to those two new lines that you put in? Yeah. Okay, worst comes to worst, and you can't... The switch, the slider that you have, mm -hmm. what I would do is take your little tiny whoop, stick stick the thing all the way up at 100%, try it, fly it, see if it feels normal, and then move it all the way down, which should only be maximum 50%, uh, see, if you, see if you see the difference. Now, if everything's screwed up, if somehow that slider won't work or we did something wrong on your radio, right. what you do is you push the button, you go back to the mix page, Okay. Mm -hmm. You scroll down to the first line that we inserted, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Press and hold it. You'll get the menu, and it says edit, delete. delete. Just delete both. Delete both of those lines, and we'll try it again later. But it should okay. work. All right. Should work. Yeah, I'd be interested. I had I I wasn't thinking that that uh, that we you all have know, your radio. <laughs> that you don't you know you all don't have this this. This radio doesn't cost any more than your radio, actually, I don't think. Well, now you can get this for 121, but all the same. Wait, yeah, but uh, at any rate, it, uh, you saw how it worked with that, with that little hot rod on 2S. It was very controllable, 
there in, in inside mm -hmm. with the maximum of 50% throttle. Now, if that was 50% throttle, I can only imagine what this little puppy will do at 100% throttle. <laughs> Mm. It's going to be it's going to be a little rocket ship, and uh, you're like. it's it's just as cute as can be, I tell you. Mm -hmm. And it's um, when you look at the size, it's you're blurry. Oh, yeah. You're when you you're look blurry. at the size of it, 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 you can almost cover it up completely with the tiny hole. Yep. And here mm. comes Ed to save the day. I'm sure he has the answer <laughs> that we're looking for. Hi, Ed. Wait, Ed is here. I got to put on my mask. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just. Oh, I'm sorry. I had to do a coat. <laughs> Unlike Carlos's radio. Oh, he has the QX. I have real knobs on my radio, okay? Yeah. Well, so, then you can do. Oh no! I want to look at that that because I definitely want to play with my knobs, Mitch. Because that I know, cool. I know the knobs are. I'll, I'll tell you what. I'm using S2. I'm using this knob on my radio for that adjustment. When it's turned all the way up, that's normal. That's a hundred percent. When I have it halfway at the detent, that means my full throttle is seventy-five percent. And when it's all the way down, that limits it to 50 percent throttle so you can really fine tune it uh to fine tune your maximum power setting without going into beta flight you just do it with your radio and it well and i mean cool. that that's very cool mitch because i mean i would never thought of trying that before and i played around with throttle expo and stuff so would you equate that to being like throttle expo or oh absolutely because what it does think about this <clears throat> when your maximum throttle is is a hundred percent okay then your whole stick movement goes from forget expo it goes from zero to a hundred so every every motion of the stick increases the throttle more but if you have only 50 percent throttle when your stick is all the way at the top then you're only gone from zero to 50 percent so you have twice as much resolution over your control and and i think this is uh an important distinction in that expo on your throttle just throw uh flattens out the middle point Correct. Whereas what you're talking about is it's like a governor. The throttle is still linear, just less touchy. Now, if no, but if you have Expo pro programmed in, it still uses the Expo. It just desensitizes your throttle by half. Figure if you use the whole range of this setting, you're desensitizing your throttle by right. half. Yeah. You're going to get. But if the expo is in the center, it'll still be in the center. Mm -hmm. Actually, it, it it'll be a, it'll it'll probably be a little higher than the center. I I don't use a lot of throttle expo. You really with with with, with this you don't need it. And uh, I found that with this thing, it really makes it. I flew around the house a little bit today, and it made the altitude control a hundred percent easier. Yeah, see, I, I I gotta try that. I I really gotta try that. Yeah, and even on even on the the, the five inch quads, when you're flying outside, if you want to, you know, just calm them down a little bit. I heard to, that, man. I can't turn, tell you how many times I've been in control turn, crash half the time. Right. Turn the throttle. Turn it. Turn it down. And mm -hmm. what I did today, interestingly enough, like I said, is I put I I said if I I wanted it to hover at half stick. So I put the stick in half, and 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 then, as it was flying, I turned the little knob, and and at one point it was climbing, and I turned the knob back a little more, and it started to, and I turned the knob to right to the point where it was covered, cool. and then so now I knew that exactly half stick that was the amount of power it took for that quad. To that have. that is very yeah. cool. And and then I don't want to get into it tonight because it it's uh, we had enough trouble with this. But then you go into logical switches. Do you know what logical switches are, Ed? Yeah, unfortunately. 
Logical switches basically allow you to make the radio talk to you. So you set up a logical switch that says if that particular switch that you just set up, in your case you used S2 or S1, which whatever one you used, Carlos, S1. right? S1. You set it to say if S1 is less than 100%. Say something to me. And and your arming switch is on. Oh, you so, have to set criteria. What that means, yeah. Well, there's there's different conditions you can set up in the line, and the line across will read if logical switch is less than 100 percent and the arming switch is in the on position. Then, now that's what the that's the logical switch. It, it, yeah. it, you haven't told the radio what to do with that yet but you've set up the, the, the logical switch, and that might be L01, okay, logical switch. I've set switch. up logical switches on programmable controllers that had nothing to do with drones. Okay, well, a logical switch well, basically I sets up... understand what it means. Yeah, so it sets up the logic. Then you go to the, to the next page after logical switches, which is called special functions. And in special functions, you say, if logical switch L01, then play value of switch S1. So here's what happens, and I'll, I'll show you, okay? Watch, I'll show you on my radio here. Welcome to Urban TX. Okay, so now Please I've got, uh, I've got my, uh, I've got my, here, let me make it, let me make me bigger. I've got my, my knob here set to a hundred percent. Okay. Right. And I arm the quad. Now you don't hear anything, right? Because the, my logical switch says if this is less than a hundred percent. So if I turn this knob down to say 70%, okay. And then I arm the quad. 42. She says 42, which means that if, if this is, Three. if up at the top halfway is zero, this is 100 to zero to minus 100. Okay, 100. here. So mm -hmm. if the quad's not armed, she doesn't say anything because one of the conditions of that logical switch is that the, the arming switch has to be up, okay? If I'm at 100%, I don't need to worry. If I'm going out to the field and fly, and I'm expecting to have full power in my quad, and I left this stupid switch set down as low as it can go because I was flying in the house, and I go and arm the quad, this thing talks to me. Minus 100. That's Tells me cool. minus 100. If I arm the quad when it's all the way at 100 where I want it, no need to talk to me. But if it's anything less than 100... 95. See? Oh. So that reminds me whether this switch, whether I actually forgot to set this switch. Because you go out to the field with your quad, you got this thing set to maximum 50% power and you go to fly, you go, it might not be what you want, you know. <laughs> hey, so uh, at any rate, Mitch, you can set, yes, yes. I'm going to have to pop out of here. I got hey, hey, to uh, go to work tomorrow. Oh, okay. Uh, hey, or Yes. Art, just so you know, Art, you don't have to go this deep to be able to fly. Just so okay. you know, don't get discouraged because you oh, see me going all right. in all those deep stuff. <laughs> okay. No, you, you, you don't, but this this is the one. one th all right, Art, thanks for coming in, buddy. All right, take care. Always everybody. a pleasure. Have a great evening. Okay, take it easy. Art. <laughs> <laughs> Cool man Mel has joined the chat. Bye, Alvin. Hey, Mel. Mel, how you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Okay, so uh, so anyway, uh, these things seem like they they make your brain fry, but they really don't. Once once you understand some of this stuff, and they're really and they're really some handy handy little settings, uh, especially for indoor flying with these whoops. This particular one, if the screen was bigger, if you could do this like on a different screen, you know what I mean. What Your is, screen is nice; you can see what you're doing. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what I'll do next. Uh, I'll, I'll get my old QX7 out. Well, that'll I'll help show me. you guys how to do it on that because that's yeah. closer to what that's what Art has and that's what you have. It's what uh, Art bought. Yeah, QX7. And, and all the same settings are there, and the way you get to them is pretty so. Hey, Ed, how do you get to the to the channel monitor setting on your radio? To oh, monitor damn, the outputs. Get the pop out chat to work right. What's oh, you need to do the chat for you. Okay. When I pull up the QX7, let me get it out. Where is it at? Oh, my God. Where's, oh, it's in my <laughs> chair already. Yeah, you already had it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see. Where am I at? I got you, big. Turn so it on. Let me you. turn it on. Oh, that's not where I want to be. Is it? No. Oh, you were presenting me. It, it messed me up, man. When I went. That's so what I, I thought. That's what I thought. Anyway, let me turn on the radio. You're used to being in charge, but tonight I'm in charge. I get that. Oh, Mac, I get the throttle warning. Got a throttle warning. Throttle warning going on. So I'm going to turn that down. Light goes blue. Okay, okay. right now. See, right now. I don't know if you can see this. Ah. Not really. You have to turn it, Ed. You have it turn at it. an angle. You, you have, have it way. at an angle. A little there more. Yeah. Now, can, can, can you be already? Get... It's on the switches menu already. To where? No, but ah, shit. Ed, where take it? the strap. There you go. They're already showing the stick. Move the move the throttle. Up. Okay, so you're already showing the movement of all the sticks. Yeah, there, there's huh? like different pages. Like I have the Mobula Six model selected. Okay, that's that's what we're trying to tell. I'm trying to figure out how to get Carlos's radio into that. So when I, I mean, mine just goes there, and when I, um, when I scroll through, it shows different things, you know. But it always shows what your sticks are doing. Okay. So what will happen is when you when you do this mod and make one of your knobs control the maximum throttle setting like I did, then you'll be able to see it on, on the outputs. The fact that when you move the stick all the way, the little, the little slider on the screen will only go halfway up if you have the thing turned down to minimum, which is 50%. This allows you to adjust your maximum output or maximum throttle setting from the radio to between 50% all the way up to 100% with full and, motion and, and, of that knob. And that's very cool, Mitch. Okay, so like when I turn the knob on my QX7, I have I have two knobs, just like uh, this is my girl. All yeah, girls my, should have two knobs. Uh, so all, almost, Yeah, all radios that have one knob have two knobs. <laughs> but, I mean, it's like, okay, there's a definite detente in the center. Correct. So, so you know what it thinks center is, and I'm sure and that would give you a, to that. And that would give you 75% throttle at the detent. Oh, really? Right in the middle would be 75? Yeah. Well, all the way to the right is going to be 100%. All the way to the left is going to be 50%. So halfway in between is going to be 75%. I got you. Okay, cool, man. I'm going to have to do that. I'm going to have to play with that, man. I, I, yeah. I thank you for that. That's very at, cool. At any rate, you can you can, uh, you can can look at, you know, replay this video at the section where we where we went through the settings and set it up. What You don't have to go through the logical switch settings to have it talk to you. If you want to just try it on a model that, like, you're just going to fly in the house. You know what I mean? No, I mean, I, 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 okay, because here's the thing, because I've kind of, like, played with throttle adjustments and all that, but it's always been through beta flight. And it was right, nothing just leave that, yeah. Do, it was nothing I could do while on the fly, so to speak. Yeah, though this is this is a setting that's done that, that actually allows you to use your radio and you, and, and uh, all this accomplishes is desensitizing the throttle stick, changing the whole throw. You can stop presenting me, by the way. What's that? You can stop presenting me, by the way. Oh, okay. 
<laughs> I'm just saying. I don't know. I'm just sitting. Oh there, no! Yeah. You forget. You forget sometimes. You know how that you do. No, I know. I, well, I said something. And you got my logo up there too, so I like that. <laughs> well, I, you know, it only seems fitting. Pain respect. So pain, anyway, paying respect to the old guy was a drag. The old guy. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. I uh, think you should. Pull Oh, uh, Bob Casey left. Hey, good night, Bob. If if you're still here, and uh, uh, who else we got? We got a dozen people hanging in we here. That's not too bad. Rick Calvert, Luke Sutton, Mel, ourselves, and I oh, think still, still here. Yeah, there's still a few people that aren't that aren't chatting a lot, but that's good. No problem. That's. Uh, all right, so we got the little, we got the little, uh, we got this little thing set up, and there really isn't a lot to it. It doesn't come with any instructions. I have a well, question. I, I want to see. Here's a, a, a drone days brought this up too. So now that Carlos has messed with his radio, I want to see him do a little mobile six around his head right now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah all that the batteries. I'm sorry. Eddie. Let's see if the same messed you up or whatever. <laughs> All my batteries are down. I went out today and flew. Well, Love no, it. because I could have sworn at one point, Mitch got you to fool with something. S1 changed to S2, and then I don't know if you ever changed it back. That's the only thing. I did. Yeah, I think he I think he, he knows which switch is going to do it. But uh... Yeah. I can figure that out, believe it or not. Yeah. And I can always and go like back. And like I said, if you if everything if, if it's screwed up and you can't find a switch or it's not right, just delete those two lines out of there and and uh, you'll be back to where you were. No problem. You know, you know it's sometimes pretty, it's not it's a bad pretty funny, Mitch, because like six months ago, Carlos would have been terrified of doing what you just got him to do. Would yep. you say that's a fair assessment, Carlos? Yeah, I was intimidated by all this stuff. Well, he's learning. We're getting him into beta flight. Ludsat wants to know if this little this too. little drone has two screws per prop. Yes, it does. It it has two tiny little screws that hold them on. Much better than the press on ones. Uh, like Mitch, this. you see that? You see the uh, tiny hook race? And the yes, antenna. I see it. The uh, the VTX antenna. No, the yeah. uh, the receiver antenna, the little thin wire. Yes. Mine cut in half. Can I just add to that? No, uh, no. Why? <sighs> like, how do I get a whole antenna for the uh, uh for that tiny hook race? I'm not sure they could sell something like that. Uh they yeah they there has to be there has to be a replacement for it. But antennas aren't just wires. That's actually a piece of coax uh, up right. to a certain point and then the center connector the length of the amount after the coax is tuned to the frequency to and height. I don't know where I don't know where that tuning happens but all these little antennas are not just wires they're they're actually tuned to exact lengths right. uh, or else you get standing wave, what they call standing waves which really just screw you up completely um, so I have to look into I, I'm pretty sure that there's got to be, I'm not going to take it apart, but there's got to be a little micro UFL, one of those little tiny little snap-on connectors at the what bottom. That's, you think that's yeah. what it is? And I think that oh, probably any... Sake. you know how tiny that little thing would be? God. Yeah, I think that any 2.4 gigahertz antenna with a micro UFL on it, if, if it indeed has that connector in there. I can't see where the antenna can I will say the the Mobula 6 antenna just looks like a single piece of wire. It does not look like coax at all. Well, yeah. they 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 do, but even it, even if it if it is a single piece of wire, it, the length is still tuned exactly. Oh no, well what I was telling Carlos what he might be able to do is solder another piece of wire on it and it might suck right at first but then keep trimming it shorter until you got the right wavelength well you know you might be able to you probably could get away with it if you're not going to try to go for long range flying but uh what 
what I would, uh, they actually sell, and they're very cheap, replacement 2.4 gigahertz antennas for all the free sky receivers that all have that little micro UFL, that tiny little snap connector on them. Right. So uh, I bought a pack of 10 of them just to have them as spares in case they broke off. Uh, they were, you know, a couple bucks for a whole whole bag full of them. And they're longer than these antennas, but they're tuned. The, the, the length of them and the way they're built is tuned to that frequency, and that's all that matters, you know. Got it. So I guess I have to take mine apart. Yeah, I'm not an RF engineer. I know enough about that stuff to understand the, ba the basics of it. But, uh, yeah, that... Uh, How'd you, how'd you just chop it off in the prop? I think the camera does it. When the camera slides back and forth, you see where the antenna's coming up on the right-hand side of it? On the side of the camera, yeah. And I think you, if you have the opportunity, maybe you can put a, what do they call that? The shrink wrap that you like so much, so it doesn't bend it till it snaps off. Because that's what well, happens. I'm wondering, I'm wondering if you could uh, tie wrap it to that little... Um, there's a little tiny. Let me let me uh, get over here and show it to you. There's a little tiny. Um, hang on a second. Oh yeah. Let's try to zoom in on this puppy. Here, you see this little. This little little tiny slot right here. Oh yeah. I'm wondering if maybe we take a tie wrap and stick it in there. But that, wouldn't that stop you from leaning the camera back a little bit? No, because it's way behind the camera. What it might do is it might actually it might uh, push the antenna back too far right into the props. I'm thinking, yeah, that's not that's not the answer. <laughs> that's not the answer because what that'll do is it'll it'll um, it'll push the uh, antenna that back too far to the back where the antenna needs to stick up. Right. So let me cut that tie wrap out of there. That's not the answer. This the thing actually needs to go up between the camera. Well, that's you what said broke. that's what broke it, huh? Yes, sir. All Come that on. back and forth. Oh, back, oh, I see. It was vibrating in there. And then when I move my camera back as well. And then when you but crash it upside down, that doesn't help. But see, it's got a slot. It's got room for it in there. It doesn't pinch it. Because if you can wonder, see... Mitch, if can you, you can see... If can you, you can see right... Out of that slot? No, if you can see that right here, there's a slot. See? Mm -hmm. the camera, The plastic goes in right at this point here. See it? Yeah, I see what so you So this mean, antenna moves freely in there yeah, without well, actually pinching it. Going so, upside down didn't help, I guess. Or landing crashing. upside down might might do it, but I, that's... And the same thing with the VTX antenna on this side. That's, uh, all, that's all the antenna I got on my Moby 6. The, the oh, RX yeah. antenna <laughs> is on the left and the VTX antenna is on the right. And it's just a little piece of copper wire, it looks like. It just right? looks like a piece of copper wire, man. It just all looks like it. Well, look like but it's got, there's every wire. end, but there's got to be a ground on there because that's what the UFL connector. When you look at your VX, VTX antenna, there, there's always uh, a point where a little thin wire comes out of a bigger wire. Oh, I get that with the VTX antenna completely. I'm just saying I don't see no coax to this thing. I think the ground plane for the RX antenna is the board itself. It might be. It might be. Uh, but I, I can't imagine that they, that they don't have... Now, the, the Tiny Hawk has the same two antennas but there's no props for them to get pulled into because the right. props are down below. So they just kind of dangle, just kind of waggle out the back. But there is, if I look at the receiver antenna, it does come out of what looks like a, a, a piece of, of shielding or sheathing on the cable. 
and there may be a ground in there. That's no, that's entirely possible. And where and where he's talking about where he broke where it broke off could be well, very well, where the piece of coax ended. Right on top there. You, I showed it to you before. Uh, I'm in full. And antennas. They were up at the wrong wavelength. Should be exposed for 2.4. And see, uh, you know, that part. Okay. So in other words, the exposed part, and, uh, I get where, okay, where the coax ends and then the single wire ends, the difference between those two points determines the wavelength. So the amount of cable in between that point and the board makes no difference. You mean going the other way? Yeah, going towards the board because it's just like with um, XM Plus. Okay, I busted off some antennas and somebody sent me some antennas that were longer length. But I would think that the stripped out part at the end was still the same. And that's what set the wavelength. Minnesota says no. I'm, I'm looking at, at, at some of these different. Uh... It has shielding around. Well, I mean, I know all about antennas and they're, uh, as far as, let's, let me rephrase that. I know there are plenty of antennas out there are just dipoles. And it's just a single stick up in the air. And they use like on CB radios, they use the um, the top of the roof. Like people use the magnetic melts and stuff. The top of the roof gives a ground plane for the radio signal that you are transmitting. See these things, see, see these here? Right. This is what you need. And I, I think, I don't know, I have, I can't see on that board without taking the quad apart. What, what how that, and they just solder to the board. I think I'll um, just say, uh, I, I mean, look, I Mitch, I, <laughs> yeah, I, I, put, I put the new antennas on the Ecton Plus, and on the Ecton Plus, it definitely has those goofy ass connectors on it. Yeah, those tiny and, little connectors. Yeah, and, and they're tiny, man. I had to use these hemostats to crimp yeah. them in place and get them to stay. Oh yeah, and then you got to put a glob of cement butt. on top of it. You got to put you got to put glue on top of it too. Yeah, but yeah. But and uh, they come with know. glue on them, but the glue never sticks. I don't know. Now, what another thing you can do with these tiny little quads is you could actually put a, 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 a separate receiver in them, Carlos, if you want to go to that trouble. All right, I'll send you my quad and I'll pay you everything. <laughs> <laughs> You're talking about what you did to the 99, right? The Tyro 99? No, Zion? hey. The the Paul, I've seen those antennas and they look no, like a pain none, in the none, butt. None of the Tyros come with built-in receivers. Um, no, no. Didn't you do something like change the rush tank on one of them? Yeah, that's the VTX. We're talking that's about VTX. the receiver. Uh, We're talking about the receiver, receiver. here. Got it. Yeah. And uh, you can put an XM Plus in in, uh, in one of these tiny hawks. It's got the solder pads uh, underneath. You, you can get to them pretty easy to get the solder pads for the receiver. But uh, the simplest thing would be to figure out exactly what kind of antenna that oh, and, uh, uh, that by the way, most of the, um, Mitch, uh, most of the Paul could use a wrench. He could people. Oh, okay. And they yeah. solder the center and the shield to the board. It's a pain. Okay, so uh, Minnesota Paul, let me give you a moderator and welcome to the channel, my friend. Thanks for coming about in. All that. Sorry, Minnesota. Uh, my bad. Yeah, the only thing that matters is the exposed core. So it does have a, it does have a shield. Uh, None of the, you know, all of these things have shields around them, and and they're all tuned to a certain length. Like I said, I bought a I bought a whole bag full. I, I bought this this thing that I'm showing you here. Uh, somewhere I think I got it on Amazon. There's it's, a lot of people sell it. it. It's just 
2.4 gigahertz uh, receiver antennas for XM, you know, for Free Sky, and uh, they come in a little bag, and I've used, I think, one or two of them so far. But you're right; these little connectors are an absolute nightmare. I hate them. Hate them. Okay. In theory, if you're saying that all 2.4 antennas work, this is an old tiny horse, tiny horse, tiny hawk board with the old antenna. I should be able to desolder this and put the new one on and put it on the. Yeah, does it show a ground? It shows nothing, just one. We'll break out the soldering iron and heat it up and see if two wires are there at the base. Hold on, that. hold it right there while I make it bigger so I can see. You sure there's there isn't a shield coming out of there somewhere? I just see one wire. One spot that it's soldered to the board. I'm telling you, an antenna can be a single wire. It doesn't okay, well, have to be. It may be that that's the same antenna that you got that you got on on your new one, and you can just swap them out if you want to try. It's like microsurgery, though. Yeah, tell me about it. Oh, you know what? I'm so disappointed, Mitch. I'm gonna. What? I'm, you got to laugh. Hold on. <laughs> I could use a good laugh. <laughs> Oh, oh man! I so anyway, looking, we wanted to talk about the jumper, the new radios tonight too. We, we still didn't a, get to it. I'm so, well, then we don't have to do this. We don't have to laugh. We can talk about the radio too. All right. That uh, that an, that antenna thing should. All I'm uh, telling you is this: Look, I got this helping hand, thinking it was going to be something nice. The piece of crap. I'm very disappointed. Anyway. <laughs> I got the wire. I got all kinds of stuff that you suggested so I can practice soldering. I got oh. my soldering thing. But I bought this thing, and it's, Ed, I, I put the flight control on it, and I go to touch it, and it just goes. <laughs> 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 I was like, oh, my God. What a piece well, of like, I, I got the Harbor Freight one that had a little handy dandy soldering iron holder on it. Since I put in the whole the soldering <laughs> iron, and the holder just stepped uh, over like that. I think we're creating a bunch. I think we're creating a bunch of, uh, of monsters here. <laughs> let me let me go over here to uh, to race what? day quads. Cool. I know I got a link to them somewhere here. Uh, Are you going to find him a proper set of hand, helping hands there, uh, Mitch? What's that? Are you going to help him find a proper set of helping hands? No, I can't help him with that. That's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know what, Mitch? I went into your uh, list, and you don't have that. You have everything but. No, nah, because that's just something you buy it anywhere. Uh where the hell? I know I got race day quads here somewhere. Let me. RDT. Race day quads. Okay, let's go to race day quads and look up the jumper T18. Oh, uh, yeah, there's some buzz about that. Which is on, which is on pre order. Okay, so they have three different flavors. They Flavor. have the, the T18 light. Which says here the four in one module, which is the same multi protocol module that the T16 has. Then they have the T18 with the five in one module, and evidently they have added the R9 900 megahertz to the internal multi protocol module. That's pretty cool. But that has to require a whole separate transmitter because it's a different frequency and it needs a different antenna. So that means that you have to change antennas from the 2.4 to the gig to the 900 megahertz every time you. Uh, yeah, model. no doubt. So I, I that's a question, and even Joshua Bardwell didn't know the answer to that one. So it'll be interesting to see uh, what um, whether whether that. Uh, you, okay, here, here's my thoughts on this. And that is, I never have, have never ever bought 
the first release of a product because I want some other but somebody else to be the guinea pig first. <laughs> I, agree, I agree, which is why I haven't pre-ordered one. I, I <laughs> on okay, well, there you go. Because it would make that. sense to me that if if they were going to have that as a built-in protocol between the 2.4 and 900 megahertz, that you would probably have two antennas on the thing. Well, like see, the, I like have the module. Radio. Yeah, see, I have the module on mine, and that has this antenna, and then the 2.4 gig internal multi-protocol module uses this this antenna. So I do have two antennas because I'm using the external R9 module, which is 915 megahertz. That's the long-range module, and this radio works. This radio works great, and I like it. I, I want to have a, a backup radio, though. I want to have a second radio that's similar so I can, if something happens to this one, uh, I can use the other one because yeah. the, all the, in, especially the 900 megahertz stuff are all bound to the module. If I take this module out of this radio and put it in a different radio, I'm bound. I'm still bound to the module. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so I can have two radios. Uh, the internal module, unfortunately, you'd have to rebind, but the external modules. So I'm thinking about at the price they sell these things for, hundred and a half, hundred and forty dollars, you know. So I I don't really need the one with the built-in 900 megahertz anyway, and it's only a hundred and thirty-nine dollars, hundred forty bucks for the base model one with the Hall Effect gimbals and everything else. That's this one over here. This one is twenty dollars more it's 159.99 and it the only difference between these two is that this one has the uh, five in one has the built-in 900. now this one over here has got some much more expensive gimbals uh they call them uh rdc 90 gimbals and it has a carbon faceplate to make it look fancy which is not real carbon fiber it's just you know dipped or painted or something here so that's 189 so that's another th that's 190 but i think this 139 dollar for 140 bucks not to have this radio which is similar to the one i have now but with some improvements to make it more reliable that they've learned from the jumper t16 uh Mitch, that that put a battery inside? no yeah. they give you they give you a, a holder for two uh of the 18650 lithium ions oh okay but it includes a built-in charger for those. Nice. It, it, oh, it that's has USB cool. Built-in charger is a nice. Charger. Yeah, it has the built-in built charger. Protocol, right? You can yeah. fly pretty much anything with this. Anything, Futaba. Even Spectrum, toy grade, sometimes, right? Spectrum, Futaba. Yeah, I mean, tons of Nothing tons of things. Really. Yeah. So for one hundred and forty dollars, it's going to be a hell of a radio. That's the jumper. Now, this. Uh, Radio Master, the guy, they evidently split off from Jumper. They were a, uh, they were a partner. Of, you have a question, uh, Nick. Had a fight or something. Um, and they have come up with their new T16, and it's not $199. So let's see who's got the Radio Master. Let me... Uh, Mitch, me... while you're looking, I'm going to ask you the question. A to Z drone says, Mitch, which, what is the difference between the standard and the pro? Uh, on the jumper? I'm thinking that's what he's talking about. Yeah. The ones we were just looking at, the one they call pro has these uh, fancier gimbals, very, more expensive gimbals. Uh, maybe they're a little smoother, a little more precision. Uh, that's the pro. The standard is the same radio except for the upscale gimbals with the five in one module that includes the uh are the uh, 915 megahertz built in the light which is the 139 dollar version <clears throat> has the same four in one module as the uh, jumper t16 so that's the difference for 140 bucks you get the, the radio with the whole effect gimbals add another 20 bucks you get the radio with the whole effect gimbals and the built-in 900 megahertz and for another 30 bucks you get all of the above, plus you get the extra fancy, expensive, professional gimbals, gimbals. which don't I, I don't know if anybody at our caliber flying would ever be able to tell the difference. 
Drone Shot says those are the gimbals they use in the Futaba radios. In the food, yeah, they're they're they're. I guess if you if you have a fifteen hundred dollar Futaba radio and really love those gimbals, it, maybe you should maybe you should spend the extra thirty bucks because some of these Futabas and Spectrum, their high end radios cost twelve hundred, fifteen hundred uh, transmitters, a ton of money, and don't do a damn thing more than these hundred and fifty dollar jumper uh, and radio masters do. So the radio well, master. I mean that was the other thing I was going to ask you when you're talking about the Hall of Fat gimbals and all that, Mitch. So, can can you tell a difference even with those? Well, you can't. Whether you can tell the difference or not, flying them, uh, it's hard to tell. If if the uh, if the bearings yeah, yeah. are good in it and the springs are good. Is the difference between a you know one of them has potentiometers which can wear out after years of use. Uh, gotcha. I don't know if any of us fly enough to wear out potentiometers. All my old radios that I used all my life had potentiometers. The Hall effects uh, have uh, you know a, a way extended life because they don't have that potentiometer, which is a moving part in it. So, in um, other words, a solid state kind of. Well, it 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 it's using. I can't I can't explain to you. It it senses motion by when one thing moves next to another thing. It 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 senses the motion of it rather than having to have an arm sweep across a potentiometer. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So there's nothing, uh, nothing touching that's going to wear out like a like the arm on a pot. Okay. You know how volume controls on old TVs would get Absolutely. noisy as they got older? Yeah, well, that, that, that won't happen with, with a Hall Effect uh, sensor. Uh, Arizona Drone Dude, I pre-ordered yeah. the 130 Why not? Would you recommend the, the Pro for $50 more? Ah, you know, do you need do you need the biggest bucks gimbals and do you need the R9? Um, you know, or do you, or for fifty bucks, do you just want to have the best? You know, people buy Cadillacs when Chevys will get you there just as fast. Um, yeah, they're made by the same people. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, it, it, you know. If you, if, if, if you fly, if you want to fly with the R9, that's what I use on most of my stuff. All my fixed wings and, and uh, most of my quads have the R9, the long range. I never have to worry about fail safe. Never. The range on those things is five to ten miles. It's crazy. I don't even fly long range, but I, I do know that when I'm flying, I'm not going to be, uh, I'm not going to be a fail safe. And uh, no, Fred Day says the R9, the R9 would be a good show. Yeah, I'd be happy to talk about the R9. Remind me next week. Uh, we'll talk about the R9. I think it's, Well, I was going to ask you, Mitch, because I've heard some people say they had a lot of trouble setting up the R9. Oh, bullshit. It's, just, it's so easy. Well, I know. I didn't think it'd be too hard for you, but that was their complaint. And that's kind of why, they, oh, because then they tried Crossfire, and for whatever reason, they thought Crossfire was easier. Cro I... Well, with the R9, you have to flash the receivers, whereas with Crossfire, fl flashing is is done automatically. Uh, gotcha. When, when, when you okay, got Crossfire, when you got Crossfire, it checks for a, a firmware uh, mismatch, and if and it won't harm, it won't let you bind. It won't bind to the receiver if there's a firmware. But at the same time, it it, it gives you an opportunity right from the friggin' radio to update the firmware and the receiver right there at the field with with the r9 you have to solder a few little tabs to the receiver and you got to plug it into the back of your transmitter and update it through your transmitter through the module bay and yeah it's a, it's the same thing with xm with the xm uh, uh, plus and the rsxrs that's the way you have to update the firmware on a free sky receiver you gotta you know you gotta be a mechanic so in that respect, and, and, and when you easy. say that, when you say that, Mitch, that that makes a lot of sense because a lot of people are intimidated by that. I can show you how to do it. It's so it's so simple to do. 
And if you're building a quad and you're putting, right before you put the receiver in, you're gonna have to solder wires to it anyway. So you just, you go in with a plug right onto the three of the pins in your uh, external module on your transmitter and uh, you flash it right from the radio. And it, it, you know, it's intimidating the first time you do it, but after that, it just becomes kind of routine. It's nothing. I take a well, brand new receiver it's out of the bag. And, doing it once or twice. Yeah, yeah. you're right. And, and yeah. I'll tell you this, I'll admit to this right now. Makes me sound like a really chicken, whatever. But I, every drone I've ever bought, every bind and fly, or even the um, almost ready to fly where you had to put a receiver on, every one of them have told me, Oh, go here and download the latest firmware. Yeah. That's the latest firmware. I've never done that. I just always flung it the way it came. And uh, usually, chances are it'll, it'll work okay. Uh, just as well. yep. it, it'll work just as well. But I always I, I update them. And, and now uh, they've got newer firmware than what I'm using with my R9s. And they've got things, stuff they call Flex firmware, which uses, uh, allows you to use instead of S bus, it allows you to use what they call F port, which has telemetry and receiver signal on the same wire. But I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm not fooling with that. I, I've, what I got works for me. I use smart port telemetry with a separate wire and a separate S bus and I got it working and that's the firmware I flash on any new uh, R9 receiver that I get. And the cost of them is the same. The receivers are 20 bucks for the long range receiver and they're 20 bucks for the XM plus receivers. Same, same cost, the same size receivers. The, uh, uh, the uh, 900 long range receivers have, uh, have the, uh, the T antennas on, on them. Uh, um, yeah, the immortal T as they call it. Well, them. they call them immortal T, but you can see, you can see right on the back here is the T antenna. You see it? See that? Maybe oh, that wouldn't be good. Yeah, here you can see it on on this quad. I got it sticking sticking out right uh, right up here. See them, and they stick out both sides. And man, the reception on these things is tremendous. So, I like the R9. I I, I really do because I never have to worry about fail safe. And the only time I worry about fail safe is with these little. Uh, SPI receivers at D9 in the uh, in the tiny little tiny little things, but uh, then you just you know you're almost limited by the uh, video transmitter uh, VTX range anyway. Where'd Carlos go? I'm here. Oh, I'm okay. I was eating. I was eating. Yeah, he just blacked out. Oh, look, man, I I freak out about how far that Moby Six goes, and oh yeah, it gives me warnings of plenty, but it has yet to fail safe. Yeah. And it goes really far. We'll see how this little this little tiny hawk does. So let me I quick mean, talk I, about this radio. I don't necessarily. I don't fly in a big open field either. I I put all kinds of stuff between me and the bird, <laughs> and it still hangs in there somehow. What were you going to say, Mitch? I was going to just talk about these uh, Radio Master T16s because these things are coming out now too. And they're a little cheaper. Radio Master announced this 130 bucks, which is the equivalent of the T16 jumper that most of us paid 160 bucks for. It's got a touch screen, uh, but the touch screen doesn't do anything yet. Uh, <laughs> well, that's kind of good. Well, that's only because OpenTX doesn't support touchscreens, but it will in the next in the next release. So oh, it'll okay. have the touchscreens. It's got a four-in-one module, not a five-in-one. Well, uh, you can bet as soon as somebody as the platform is out there, somebody will be building stuff for that touchscreen. Oh yeah, but it's a whole sensor gimbal, and they have one. Uh, for $130 without the hall sensors, and I think you're put, you're going to get up closer to $140, $150 with the hall sensor. Now nah, here's $131. Maybe they all have the hall sensor gimbals. 
Uh, no, this one is, here it is. They have a 99, that's what I was looking for. They have a $100 version of it, which has the potentiometer gimbal. It doesn't have the whole, but if you're ah. going to buy a new, if you're going to buy a new radio of this caliber with a color screen What's and all that stuff, man, spend the 130, hall? spend the bucks and get the one with the hall sensor gimbals. Yeah, how much more is that? 20? I think yeah, bucks, 20 bucks. 30 bucks more. Yeah, they're not game over. That's the easy decision. Yeah. But you know, nobody's, no, nobody's got them yet in stock. So so we'll see. We'll see what uh, what comes of it. But uh, Maybe that's why I fly so good, Ed, because of the whole sense of gimbals. <laughs> that's uh, why, I'm, so that's why I fly so good. Also, huh? Okay. <laughs> all about the gimbals, bud. Yeah. I'm anyway, sure guys, it's more about your packs than the damn gimbals. Anyway, I gotta <laughs> gotta cut this off so I can save enough of my StreamYard's uh, live stream time this month so I can do my next live stream. I'm cutting it real close here. <laughs> all right, Mitch. Well, salute, man. Hey, thanks for oh, having me. Right. Oh, my pleasure, and thanks for coming. Thanks for coming in, guys, and, and uh, we'll talk more about this stuff next week. There's, there's yeah, that's there. cool, man. I, I, I learned it's something every uh, time. TV channel that I visit, not for nothing. <laughs> What's so that? I, I mean, uh, as long, Carlos? as long as you're patient with, I said this is the most educational TV channel that I visit. So I enjoy it. I appreciate that. Thank you. I, I, I really do. I actually I, learned I, I something. Try. And the best part is that I don't have to give you a super chat to get your attention. No, we, 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 <laughs> take, we, take, we take super chats, but no, you don't have to give me. I, I'm oh, not I would, for that. I would, I would pay you in a heartbeat. I, um, I, I keep saying I want to call you, but I just feel bad because everybody else and their mom bothers you. I, I don't like No, they you. don't actually. No? They don't. No. No. Oh, you, can, you can call I me. Like I get you. A less nuisance as possible, but I actually I am gonna try with this. Uh, I'm gonna learn how to stop. It, it kills me, but I'm. There you go. Yeah, stop. you have to. Yeah, this hobby. Requires. It'll tell you. You know, if you, it, when you learn how to build and you start to get a handle on this stuff, you really it really makes this hobby a hell of a lot more enjoyable. <laughs> well, I mean my, my the opinion, other anyway. thing. The other thing is too is that. Uh, We've all been through these trials and tribulations, and we've been through some of them together. Oh, yeah. You know, and that was really cool. Like, you, when I was trying to get that flight one thing going, you were there, <laughs> man. So it was Carlos. So, I mean, that's cool, and we all learn from that kind of stuff. Well, and that's that's the benefit, I think. I mean, you know, I look, I don't know. Compared to what Bardwell knows, he's been doing this for years, I know I know nothing but i know enough yeah, whatever uh in our circle to try to be some help and that's what i'm trying to do and i learn something new every day too you know uh and if i had been doing it for 10 years i'd be right up there with bardwell but uh it's how he makes his living this is my hobby big right. difference big difference yeah. even guys like ken hearn and the rest of them this is my hobby uh well when it always to a be pleasure much Okay, buddy. Thanks for coming. Always good to have yeah. you, Ed. Good. You Keep in touch. Carlos, Thanks. you be good. Thank you very much. And, uh, My pleasure. Eventually, I'll bother you. <laughs> All night. right, buddy. Thank you. We'll see you next time. See you around the horn. Okay. Bye-bye. Yes, and once again, that just leaves me and Spanky over there. And thanks for coming in, guys. Uh, appreciate you all hanging in here with us. I hope... Uh, we stumbled through all the stuff tonight. Maybe something informative got through to you. For those of you that helped us out, thanks uh, thanks for the suggestions and the information. Uh, Rick Halber's still here. Rick, I'm going to, hopefully the weather will be nice in the next day or two. I go out, take this little tiny hawk for a fly and actually uh, take my camera and record it. So we'll show you that. And thanks again. Uh, Ed, thanks for coming in. Carlos, drone shots. Jody, always... Uh, Always good to see it. He's liking the Jumper T18 Pro. You know, I am. I am too. And if it's if it's only thirty dollars more, and it says Pro on it, I'm probably going to buy it, just because it says Pro. Even if you know, it's because that's just uh, the way we are. <laughs> we we want to know we're out there with with the best. And it's and it's not a fifteen hundred dollar radio. It's a less than two hundred dollar radio. 
Thanks again, Rick. Drone Days, thanks for coming, Arizona Drone Dude. Thanks for coming in, buddy. I appreciate it. Jim, I didn't even know you were here, man. Anyway, good to, these guys keep me busy. Thanks for coming in. Good to see you. Who else did I miss? Ludset, thank you, my friend, for coming in. And uh, Minnesota Paul, thanks for finding us and uh, look forward to seeing you again. Jody, drone shots. Who else we got here? I think... Uh, I'm going back far enough that everybody else has probably gone home. If I missed you, doesn't mean I don't appreciate you. Thanks for stopping by. I will crank up my music a little bit here to end the show. And with that, I think I'll turn it over to my buddy, Spank, the monkey, to say goodnight like we always do. And I'll see you guys on Thursday. Say goodnight, Spanky.